Hello, welcome to Daily Prayer today for uh, September 3rd, 2020. Glad that you are with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Eternal God, we give you thanks that through the gift of our baptism you call us to a new way of life in your realm of grace and peace. By the power of your Holy Spirit, let your will be done in our lives and in this world that you love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our hymn for today is Spirit of God, Descend Upon My Heart, written to, or it's set here to Morakam. It's written by George Crowley in 1854, and the tune was written by Frederick Cook Atkinson in 1870. job. Our readings for today are Psalm 116 and 147 verses 12 through 20, Job 16, 16 through 22, 17, 1, 17, 13 through 16, Acts 13, 1 through 12, and John 9, 1 through 17. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I kept my faith even when I said, I'm greatly afflicted. I said in my consternation, Everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your servant girl. 
you have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. And then Psalm 147, 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Then from Job chapter 16 and 17. Job continues. My face is red with weeping, and deep darkness is on my eyelids. Though there is no violence in my hands, and my prayer is pure, O earth, do not cover my blood, let my outcry find no resting place. Even now, in fact, my witness is in heaven, and he that vouches for me is on high. My friends scorn me, my eyes pour out tears to God, that he would maintain the right of a moral a mortal with God, as one does for a neighbor. For when a few years have come, I shall go the way from which I shall not return. My spirit is broken. My days are extinct. The grave is ready for me. If I look for Sheol as my house, if I spread my couch in darkness, if I say to the pit, You are my father, and to the worm my mother, or my sister, where then is my hope? Who will see my hope? Will it go down to the bars of Sheol? Shall we descend together into the dust? And from Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 12. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger. Lucius of Cyrene. Manaen, a member of the court of Herod, the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Lord, the, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had John also to assist them. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they met a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet named Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man who summoned Barnabas and Saul and went to hear the word of, the, of God. But the magician, Elimus, for that is the translation of his name, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, You son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, full of all deceit and villainy, will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And now listen, the hand of the Lord is against you, and you will, bind, you will be blind for a while, unable to see the sun. Immediately mist and darkness came over him, and he went about groping for someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was astonished at the teaching about the Lord. Then from John chapter 9, verses 1 through 17. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. 
When he said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind men, What what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. And he said, He is a prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our song, or our hymn, excuse me, was Spirit of God Descend Upon My Heart. Um, this reflection on Galatians 5.25 was written by a literary Anglican clergyman yep, whose preaching drew people of many social classes to one of the formerly poorer London churches. The tune was created for Abide With Me, um, but, not, but more often appears with the present text. Some great stuff. The one that I really love is the um, uh, Teach Me the Patience of Unanswered Prayer. It's so very poignant. Anyways, so Job, we have Job continuing to, to just be sorrowful. He is, um, again, back to this sort of very depressing and, um, uh, what was the word I was thinking of as I was reading it? Um, um, not. Uh, sort of defeatism or 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 that sort of thing um, uh, that there is no meaning that I'm just going to be here alive for a little while. It would be great if I could talk with God about this thing, but you know I'm not going to be here that long, and then I'm going to die and I'm going to be done, and it's going to be just over with. Um, he is not well pleased with the situation, and he um, he's again contending with God, right, crying out to God, and and actually to a certain extent respecting God. His friends, he's not, he does not have a good time with because they're, they're basically accusing him of breaking God's law. So he's kind of putting them down as he is saying all this. Then we have in um, Acts, we have, this is now the beginning of Paul and Barnabas's ministry. Um, the Holy Spirit marks them apart in this group of leaders among the church of Antioch. Just as an interesting aside, there are all sorts of different names here in this list of, of leaders. Um, there are Greek names and Jewish names. There's uh, a man who's called Niger, who may well be from probably, you know, like northern Africa, a black man. Um, there's, there's just this interesting mix of people. And the Holy Spirit marks apart uh, Paul or Saul and Barnabas to go and spread the gospel. So they start to do it. We also see that Paul, that Saul is now being called Paul. Um, There's no formal sort of moment when he is sort of granted this new name by God, as we see with others. So it may have been that sort of private sort of thing that he has done, or it may just be that he's sick of telling the story about how he used to be Saul um, the guy who was pursuing the church, and now he's actually uh, trying to spread the gospel instead. Um, so maybe that's why he changes his name. We're not quite sure. Um, he goes, and they they are speaking to these sort of very high up people, officials, and there's this magician who tries to kind of dissuade this um, this official from becoming a believer in Jesus. And Paul just jumps out and curses him. Um, we get the fiery nature of, of Paul. We get an idea why 
really up to this point, every time he's interacted with people, they've kind of wanted to kill him. Um, and that's going to be the case for a little while. He's very fiery. He gets people triggered pretty quickly and easily. He is very passionate, but he is not very um, politic. He's not very uh, uh, gracious in his words. He kind of just comes out and says, says what he thinks. Um, this magician is struck down blind, and because of it, the official becomes a believer in Jesus because he sees this great wonder. Um, then we have in John's Gospel, Jesus is also healing. He heals a man from blindness, which is really interesting, this um, healing of blindness along with this story of granting blindness. Um, but he heals this man, and I love this story. He heals this man, um, does it with mud. First, he, he spends a little bit of time in explanation. His disciples ask, you know, was it this man's sin or was it someone else's, his parents, for instance, who sinned so that he's born blind? Born from this assumption that God is just, that God works in, in ways that we can understand that go along lines that we can understand as just. So therefore, if something bad happens, it must be a result of sin. This is an assumption that is being called to question in the book of Job. Um, the same assumption that something bad happens, so therefore you must have done something bad. Jesus says, no, it's not about that. The reason that he is blind is so that I can show the glory of God through this situation, um, which is kind of an interesting slightly unsettling answer almost, but it is, it calls it to, to question that assumption that if something bad happens, it's because that there was, there was some sort of divine reason, there was some sort of punishment or something like that, which, um, which is an oversimplification, uh, as we're seeing in the gospel of, or in the book of Job. But Jesus goes ahead and he heals this man. And everybody in this marketplace, they know him. They've seen him. At the end of this story, we find out that he's on the older end of the spectrum. He's an adult. He's, he's been there for a while. Um, and they've seen him over and over. And some are, you know, there, there's conversation in this marketplace. Oh, isn't that that man that used to be blind? No, it's, it's just somebody who looks like him. And he says, no, it's me. I, I'm the guy. Well, what happened? Some guy named Jesus, he came and he gave me sight. So the Pharisees call him to account because he's this witness potentially against Jesus. Jesus also healed him on the Sabbath day. So again, this is another infraction that Jesus has done, healing someone on the Sabbath. And they, they question this man, right? How, how is it that this man, who we know is a sinner, is actually doing this healing? What do you think about this guy? And he says, well, I think he's a prophet. Um, and we'll have some more of this interaction between the Pharisees or the, the, these sort of Jewish leaders and this man. And it's, it's an interesting one. So those are our readings for today. Let's go ahead and join together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Loving God as the rising sun chases away the night, so you have scattered the power of death and the rising of Jesus Christ, and you bring us all blessings in him. We especially we thank you for the ministry of word and sacrament. Those who serve and care for others. The affection of our friends. Your call to love and serve one another. The presence and power of your spirit. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We thank you for the birth of Sophie and Jason, and that Kathy is home. 
Mighty God, with the dawn of your love, you reveal your victory over all that would destroy or harm, and you brighten the lives of all who need you. Especially we pray for the church in the Asian Pacific region. Endangered species of animals and plants. Those who are isolated by sickness or sorrow. Those who suffer mental anguish. All who seek the way and truth of Christ. People of God, for what else do we pray? We continue to lift up the family and friends of Bill Mehmet, as well as James Mehmet, for the family and friends of Alba Hill, Tony's mother. For Johnny, Lorraine's brother, who's for Mary Beth, Sue's sister-in-law. For Chris, Amy's friend. For Mary and her feet. For my friends, David, Sandra, and Kylie. Kaylee, excuse me. For Charles. For Kelly and Louise and Beverly. For COVID-19 victims. And two unspoken requests. Holy God, your love is higher than the heavens and your grace is wider than the sea. Awaken our hearts to the joy of your presence and open our lips to sing your praise. To the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, and also go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org. Our readings today came from the Reform Common Lectionary, Daily Lectionary Readings, from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Our liturgy came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA, 2018 edition. Thank you so much for joining me. Join me next time. If you have any comments or questions, please fill them in on this section, or you can go to our website or contact us that way. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.